Woodland creation is a key tool to tackle both the climate and nature crises, and the UK has ambitious targets for woodland creation over the next decade. But to deliver for people and wildlife, woodland creation needs to be both well informed and well designed based on some key conservation principles. The Woodland Trust will shortly be publishing a guide to woodland creation, setting out our approach to establishing new woods and trees that are well suited to site characteristics and to their landscape context, and also that embrace the aspirations and objectives of landowners and communities. A thorough site assessment is an essential element of every woodland creation project. Building an understanding of the landscape context, the characteristics of the site and its key conservation features in terms of habitats and species present, as well as any practical constraints on woodland creation. Site assessment begins with scoping and desk surveys and biodiversity records play a crucial role in building an understanding of the habitats and species present on the site. Inventories such as the priority habitats, ancient woodland and ancient tree inventories, as well as species records with access through the NBN Atlas or the Woodland Wildlife Toolkit, underpin the site assessment process at this stage. These records are also particularly important in identifying where further site survey and specialist surveys are required to build an effective site assessment. New woods and trees should complement and enhance existing conservation features and help to restore degraded landscapes and ecological function whilst avoiding any negative impact on existing conservation features. A sound understanding built through the site assessment process is crucial to achieving good design and the successful establishment of new woods and trees. Our site at Brunei near Neath provides a great current example of our approach and practice. Searches of biodiversity records indicated that the site was largely improved grassland with limited species interest and little that would be impacted by woodland creation. However, searches also revealed patches of greater floristic interest as well as remnants of wood pasture, wet flush and historic orchard features. These features influence the design at Brinai with wood pasture restored and the farm orchard reinstated. Glades, rides and areas of wet flush add complexity to the areas of new woodland. Brunei has already seen the planting of over 150,000 trees along with new hedgerows and the introduction of white park cattle to the wood pasture areas. It's already providing an important public space on the edge of Neath, delivering great benefits for both people and wildlife. Welcome to the presentation. I'm Kelly Hemmings from the Royal Agricultural University presenting on ancient woodland indicators. So can historic herbarium specimens such as the wood anemone here be added to more recent biological records to inform current ecological planning? We're focusing on Vice County 33 East Gloucestershire. Ancient woodland in the UK is defined as land that has been continuously wooded since at least the year 1600 or 1750 in Scotland. Such woodlands are richer in ancient woodland indicator species, such as those that we see in the images here. For this study, I retrieved 305 historic herbarium specimens dating between 1834 and 1949, 1950 being the cutoff threshold as being pre-intensification. Most resources were digital from Herbaria at Home from BSBI and a few from GBIF, as well as physical specimens from the Royal Agricultural University's own collection, many of which were very early in date as shown in the black bar to the left of this graph. Specimens were duplicates or had two vague geo-reference data to be mapped, leaving 246 mappable specimens. I then compared those to the same locality in more recent records using the BSBI database with permission, with a one kilometre radius as a basis or a larger area record, such as a large continuous woodland. In black on the map, we have the 55% of historic specimens that were found in more recent records between 2000 and 2021 in the same locality. In grey, we have the 12% that were most recently recorded between 1950 and 1999, but 33% of those historic specimens had no post-1950 record at all, and those are in white on the map. So for those 33%, they could indeed supplement recent biological records to help identify ancient woodland or in conservation, restoration or connectivity planning and monitoring.
The 55% that were relocated just reinforces that ancient woodland indicator species do need continuity of habitat. We should also recognise the biases in herbarium data as well as the gaps from false absences in terms of collector bias for locations or particular species. But nevertheless, those hard won data points for that particular time in which they were collected do represent an early source of species distribution data that we can use in ecological decision making today. And with thanks to the Wildflower Society for funding a small student project linked to the herbarium. Thank you for listening. and I'm here to talk about part of my PhD research, the RHS Slugs Count Project. This citizen science project aims to find out more about the slugs um, species found in gardens across Britain by equipping gardeners with the tools and knowledge to follow scientific collection protocols and identify slugs found in their garden to species. Recruitment for this year-long study began in February 2020 with a huge 2,970 applications to take part and just 60 spaces available. This allowed us to randomly select a range of participants and cover a good geographic spread of mainland Britain. Participants were sent a survey pack containing all the materials needed and invited to attend online training sessions to learn survey protocols and how to identify slugs to species. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the project had a delayed start with our first surveys happening from October 2020. Participants were asked to carry out a 30 minute survey at night in their gardens every four weeks, collecting any active slugs they found along a set route. They were then given 48 hours to identify the slugs to species before posting them live into the RHS lab for verification. In the lab, identifications were checked by myself before all specimens were preserved and stored in 70% ethanol for future study. By the time data collection ended in 2021, over 21,000 slugs had been collected, successfully identified and verified to species or species aggregate from external appearance. 94% of systematic surveys were successfully completed and just three of the 60 participants dropped out before the project end, a very surprising high completion rate. While data collection has now ended, some of the specimens collected do require further morphological or DNA analysis to identify them confidently to species level. Once these identifications have been confirmed, all slug species records from this project will be made publicly available. It's anticipated that these will be available via the MBN by January 2023. We hope the short video has been insightful in demonstrating how citizen science can be successfully used to generate a large amount of reliable data on a difficult to identify species group. Many thanks to the organisations who've helped support this project and especially to the many people involved in collecting data. Please do reach out via email or Twitter if you have any questions.